behind putting this together. And let me also, I believe James Yeku is online. Dr. Dr. Yeku. Yes, I'm here. From the USA, thank you very much. Yes, I just want to acknowledge you that you are there. And then to also uh, say that your, your last symposium actually inspired us. And uh, really appreciate that, that and then um, we're also trying to see how we can sustain this kind of uh, interaction and discussion in this part of the world. Okay, so uh, colleagues, I want to welcome you once again. Um, those who have been with us, uh, those who have attended uh, uh, summer school in Lagos, and those who have been part of the uh, the initiative we have been uh, we have been pushing <laughs> in Lagos, uh, our modest effort to contribute to uh, DH, um, you know, development in in Nigeria and Africa. Uh, I welcome a lot of people from all over the world who are joining us today, and uh, and I hope that this very um, program we are trying to put together will be sustainable. And then uh, this very first one we're having today will be of benefit very hugely to uh, all of us. Now, what we're we doing uh, is very simple. Just introduce the program and then just run through some key points that I want, especially those who are coming for the very first time to DH, become aware that some of our junior colleagues are joining us. Uh, a number of them are getting to know DH for the very first time. So um, for the experts who are in the house uh, and those who are the, the guru, please just permit me to just uh, go very slowly and very uh, in, a, in a simple way so that those who are coming in for the very first time, they are coming across DH for the first time, they can actually uh, you know, get along very, very easily and then be able to um, get to know what we are doing and be able to flow when we get to the question time, okay? Uh, so basically, when we talk about uh, digital humanities uh, is, is something that's already uh, going out there uh, in the West, um, we, all, we all understand and we all agree that this is a different age in which we find ourselves. Um, there is a revolution going on affecting virtually every aspect of our lives. And we cannot afford to be left behind. Now, when we talk about um, digital humanities, basically, um, we are actually uh, looking at a situation where, you know, the digital technologies now present us with opportunities, <clears throat> excuse me, to deploy tools that will promote greater opportunities greater openness and greater productivity with translational and collaborative impact towards meaningful contribution to national and global development. Now, you see, when we begin to apply technology to what we do in the humanities, we are going to actually change the narrative. You know, before now, people used to feel, used to think that, oh, we are not doing anything. You know, they're not hearing our voices. They are not, they don't understand, you know, what, what we are doing. We are not contributing to national and global development. But thankfully, we now have this technology that can actually transform and reconfigure what we do. Um, and so, I mean, the, the, this age has been described as the fourth industrial revolution, okay? It's a, it's the age of big data. And of course, when we talk about DH, we cannot leave out big data as the core of um, DH projects. I mean, because you are dealing with you know, very huge data that can now be processed digitally by technology. And so you don't need to do manual, you know, counting of your, of your, of your you know, frequency uh, patterns in your, in your data or trying to transform the, the you know, uh, static data, you know, manually, okay? Now we have software, an application that can do that very easily for us and very quickly and very objectively, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are two key words for those who are coming for the first time. There are two key words that are important in this whole business, digital and humanities, okay? It's just an imagined field, you know, a kind of a break away from the centuries old traditional and analogic approaches that trademark our professional and academic domains in the human sciences, okay? But thankfully we now have 
something that can change what we are doing. Digital derives its virtues and value from the availability of a range of new technologies. Technologies. Basically, DH explores the emergence and use of these technologies and their impact on scholarship, on cultures, and on society. In fact, no discipline in the arts or in the humanities and social sciences, you know, can be immune from the impact of technology. So whatever your background, you're coming from philosophy, from history, from languages, from literature, you can actually fit into what we do in digital humanities. Okay, so it talks about the intersection of computing, research and teaching in the fields of the humanities. Therefore, in a wider sense, DH can be understood as an umbrella term for a number of different activities that surround technology and humanities scholarship, like data mining, born digital preservation, visualization, and many others. Okay, at its core, this humanities is more akin to a common methodology outlook than an investment in any one specific set of texts or even technology. You know, scholars have different ways of looking at DH, but whatever the you know, different perspective, there is something that unites all of us, the importance, okay, the relevance of applying technology to what we do in the humanity. That's a unifying, you know, thread in all this discussion and the debate, okay? So one other thing is that you have, you know, the, the opportunity to collaborate, to argue, you know, to argue and then to present our research. Of course, to make our research open, Okay, and you know, to be able to allow, you know, other scholarly communities to criticize and also interrogate what we do. Okay, it's not just, so when we talk about digital humanities, you know, this scholar says it, it addresses and then get despite subject matters across media, language, location, and history. But however heterogeneous it is, this humanity is unified. Now you take note of that is unified by its emphasis on making, connecting, interpreting, and collaborating. Uh, and that's the joy of what we are doing today, that from different parts of the world, different parts of the world, we can collaborate, we can connect, and we can investigate issues that we have of phenomena in the humanities. The value collaboration, plurality, uh, investigation of human culture, and the destruction of and reflection of traditional practices. And the concern with not just the use of this technology for humanity project, but how the use of this technology for humanity project changes the user's experience. That's very important. So we are not just trying to, you know, um, debate, argue here, but our, our main objective is how do we benefit society? How will our work, our projects, how will it make some transformation in society where we live. Okay, how do we change the way things are done? Okay, through our own humanity background and experience and training. Okay, but now adding technology to it, we're able to make, uh, you know, more impact in society. It also talks about, you know, you, are, you apply computational, uh, you know, methods uh, to do research. Okay, so uh, get ready for some of us that are just coming at, uh, you know, afresh. You may need to learn some, you know, uh, computer programming, you know, application, so that you can be able to function very well when you come into DH project and DH, you know, initiatives. Now, let me just quickly pick some important concepts in digital humanities. Number one, digital, digital culture. Now, it, it just describes the idea that technology and, and the internet sig significantly shape the way we interact we behave, we think, and communicate as human beings in a societal setting. It is a product of pervasive technology and limitless, limitless access to information. Okay, it's also seen as um, the the knowledge, the part of the knowledge, the beliefs, and the parts of people interacting on digital networks that recreate. Please underline that word that recreates. So. What we are trying to do by applying technology to what we do is to recreate, okay? Recreate tangible work culture and create new strains of cultural thought and practices so that, you know, um, our audiences can benefit actually from, uh, from our work, okay? So we are looking at 
cultural thought uh, practices native to digital network. And then we are using, uh, you know, digital technology to transform that. Now, another, another concept you are likely to be coming across very frequently in GA to be digital scholarship, okay, is the use of these two, it's just simply the use of these two um, evidence, method of inquiry, research, publication, and preservation to achieve scholarly and research goals. It encompasses scholarly communication using digital media and research on, on digital media, okay? It's more than just using information and communication technology to, to, to research, to teach and collaborate, but it is embracing the open values, ideology, and potential of technology born of technology born of peer-to-peer -peer networking and wiki ways of working in order to benefit both the academia and the society. So you, you can see what we are talking, the emphasis more on how do we benefit society? How do we make our work relevant? Okay, to our communities. Okay, the time has come that those of us in the humanities will begin to think very critically and deeply on how are we making impact? Okay, look at, at COVID-19. Is there no way we can contribute? No, we, are, we can contribute, we can actually make impact. Okay, for instance, now we are looking at the use of social media now to, for public health awareness in Nigeria, in Lagos. Okay, that, that's a project that you can work on. Okay, and you monitor and you, you assess how social media is impacting, is transforming the way, you know, health officials are connecting to, to, the, to the citizen. And what are the impacts of their, you know, their activities? So those are things that we can begin to look at. Now, two other concepts I will look at before I move to the next, to the next point is digitalization and digitization, okay? People do often confuse these two uh, concepts. Now, when we talk about digitalization, Okay, we are referring to more than the technical transfer of analog information and behavior pattern to our digital format. It is fundamentally, you know, the process of changing the way knowledge is disseminated and, you know, and knowledge is acquired. And actually this, this has to do more with organization, okay, in which an organization, an institution, a university, a uh, polytechnic, and you are transforming all your, analog document, written document, you are transforming them into digital formats. Okay, that digitalization. Now, the one that concerns us very closely is digitization. Now, you are going to discover that in DH, digitization is a very central project that many of us are getting involved in or we, are, we get involved in. Now, this is taking as the process of transforming non born digital materials that is manuscript, for instance, you know, written manuscript that's not born, uh, analog data, you are, you are, you've gone out, you've recorded your, your, uh, your, your subject on the field, and then you need to trans transcribe that and translate that into digital form, okay? And you process them in a format that the computer can read, okay? So that's the essence of digitization, that the, the computer, or whatever, whatever technology you are using can read, can code, and they can transform and can interpret the information you have in that document, okay? So uh, that's a scholar that actually, um, you know, put, try to define the two and then look at them, um, you know, juxtapose, in the juxtapose way. He said, this digitalizer is an organization of several and diverse social life, social life sphere, via this communication technology, whereas, Digitalization is a conversion of analog information into digital form. So it's very important that we understand those two concepts. Now, let me now look at how DH is looked at from institutional perspective. Now, we're not talking about when you set up a digital humanity center, what does it involve? Okay. A digital humanity center is an entity where new media and technology are used for humanity-based research for teaching, for intellectual engagement, and for experimentation. The goals of the center are to further, to expand humanity scholarship, to create new forms of knowledge, to explore technology impact on humanity-based discipline. To accomplish this goal, a digital humanity center can undertake some or the following activities. You know, you talk about teaching, 
We talk about creating tools, talk about building uh, digital collections, analyzing humanity collections, uh, managing research, research uh, process, and you know, setting up workshop and courses, uh, offering lectures and programs, conferences, and you have your, you know, your, your, your staff working with you, and then you provide collegial support, collaborating with other people, you know, within your community and outside your community. So uh, if you are thinking of setting up a DH center, these are things you must put in perspective or you must make sure you are taken care of, okay? So you have other details there. I won't be able to go through that because of my time. Now, why is DH important to us as African scholars, okay? Now, for those of us doing uh, research in Africa or you are doing Africa-related projects, okay, it provides the best platform to do more impactful, globalized, and enduring research work. We now have access to new technologies and digital methodology that can simplify the stressful process of traditional approaches. More importantly, the collaborative and translational dimension in DH enables researchers in different parts of the world working on projects in Africa or in Africa to interconnect, to access funding opportunities, and then to, um, to access funding opportunities and then to, to, to make impact in, uh, in our communities. Now, I won't have the time to look at the historical perspective, but you can, you, I mean, you'll get the slide later, okay? How they started and the various, you know, epoch or the, the, the stages of development in DH. Um, we have that, um, you know, um, documented or, or summarized here. But more importantly, we are looking at the era of the internet now, where we find ourselves. It is called the DH movement. This was the time that the DH actually, you know, gained the muzzle, okay? And the, you know, the, the widespread impact that we are now enjoying today. And so uh, it's important we, 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 we take note of that. Now, in the early stage of uh, its development, individual scholars within the arts and humanities were making use of computer assisted techniques in their works to create couples, do text analysis, to compile words and patterns in language and, and in literature. But now, people are getting into big data um, you know, projects and they're looking at something bigger than just you know, text analysis, okay? Now, people are now looking at the affordances that technology that now make available to us to do our project. Do you differentiate the different use of computers as a tool for dissemination and not the same as embedding computer assisted tools and technique, techniques within the methodology and ideology of arts and the humanities? Okay, so it's very, it's, it's different from you are, you, are, you are using computer, it's different from you know, what we are doing when we talk about DA. So we have DH as online presence and DH as analysis, okay? So we have scholars have done quite a lot of work in different areas of that. So in corporal analysis and in, um, in, in, in digitalization. Now we have some projects all over the world uh, and I'm happy that we have uh, some of our colleagues from, from Europe and then from, from the US uh, online with us. They may be able to share their experience with us on the project they are working on. But we have quite a number of projects going on all around the world. In fact, I think the University of London, uh, University of London makes millions of pounds in research revenue from DH every year, every year. So uh, as DH scholars, we can actually help our university to make money by getting to projects that, you know, can attract funding to our university. And of course, when you are doing that, you know, your, 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 your superior will actually, you know, tend to love you more and then you are making impact, okay? So we have some of the early work in creation, in sharing, in remediation of print materials, uh, creation of web-based web, web, web resources uh, that can help people to, to search and get material from them, okay? So these are some of the things that we need to keep in mind as we go to our discussion today. Um, now, we have some of these methodologies. You can see that on the screen. Uh, I won't go into detail. So how you can collect your data in, um, in, in DH, uh, some of the things you need to do, how you can interpret your data, uh, the, uh, the, the applications that are available, and the, the things you can do with them, okay? Now, let me quickly now talk about the feature of DH and our, our text, okay? Now, that is why it's important that for all of us 
who are, in, who are in the humanities or social sciences, we must understand that the feature of our discipline just lies with the use of technology. There is no escaping. There is no running away from it. There is no denying the facts. Okay, so this scholar says, these technologies are not going away anytime soon. <laughs> so, although DH has had a rapid swell, it will remain essential that we investigate, we use and experiment with technology over the coming decade. So, we have a lot of work to do, um, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. And so, that's why we need to get involved in DH projects and DH initiatives in our very university, and we can collaborate to make sure that we are able to push the frontiers of knowledge in DH in Africa, and then we connect with our colleagues all over the world, okay? So possibly what our role? A number of these humanities are going on in different parts of Africa. I acknowledge that in South Africa, in, uh, in, in um, Cameroon, in Ghana, people are doing quite a lot of work, okay? So, but we still have more to do. It is time we use Utilize DH platform worldwide to tell our stories. Don't just keep quiet. Don't just remain in your corner. Tell your story, let people know. Develop a website that people can know what you are doing. You also enlist yourself on DH related listeners and platforms. For example, uh, AOR, that is uh, Association of Internet Researchers, GoDH, Global Outlook for Digital Humanity. Get involved. Okay, you connect with colleagues and researchers in DH, attend conferences in DH, workshop and summer school. Invest in yourself by learning simple programming and coding and tools in DH. Now we have an example of a project going on in South Africa. You can see the, the image there. Uh, you have the, the National Library, uh, you know, trying to digitize newspaper, you know, collection over the years. Uh, that's a huge project. At the University of Lagos, we're also doing something similar, trying to digitize uh, some of the manuscripts and documents. Now, this, this is, um, you know, an example of uh, a research project for those of you in Nigeria. Okay, you have this, you have this newspaper you know, getting destroyed at the National Library, National Archive. Nobody's working on it. You can get funding and digitize this, this material. And then we can, we can preserve them from getting destroyed and we are losing that memory, you know, forever. <coughs> now, here we have uh, for, our, for our Center for Digital Humanities, here you have uh, an overview of our activities, okay? Uh, you some of the things we are doing in Lagos. And I'm sure uh, you can replicate the same thing wherever you are, you know, uh, in, in wherever you find yourself, you can replicate the same thing. Okay, that's our website in which you can, you can actually visit us. And now, this is one of our success stories. Uh, for some of you may, may still remember this, this event. Um, that was uh, ADHO 2020 last year. Uh, actually, some of our, uh, some of our colleagues, that attended the Lagos Summer School in Digital Humanities were, you know, they competed for the scholarship uh, to attend the, the, the workshop and the conference in Netherlands. So we have four of them here, um, you know, where we took uh, that photograph in Netherlands, that's the lighting. Then after that, we now move to uh, Utrecht for uh, the main conference, okay? Here you have them again. Okay, so some of the projects we are doing in Lagos, you have them there. Um, Corpus of Nigeria New Media Discourse, Corpus of Nigeria Literary Discourse. Uh, we are supporting uh, an online learning platform. We are trying to do um, Corpus of Digital Public Health Communication. I just mentioned that. We are looking at Corpus of uh, Digital Political Discourse in Nigeria. Uh, for some of you that may know, um, we just got a grant from TED Funds uh, to, do, um, to do our projects on political discourse, uh, this political discourse in Nigeria. So these are things we can do uh, from a different corner, wherever you are. Then we're also looking at the littered Lagos, a uh, digital depiction of Lagos City in literary works. Now, these are possible projects, uh, my dear colleagues and, and ladies and gentlemen. These are the suggestions of things you can do anywhere you, you, you find yourself. You can digitize cultural heritage and cultural artifacts you can construct digital corpora of historical and different documents or manuscript. You can do this collection of African women writers, you know. You can do a collection, digital collection of struggle for self-determination or independence in Africa, uh, you know, based on your, or your own country or your state. You can do an online repository of colonial experience in African states. 
You can document stories of civil war or conflict in your state, in your country. You can work on indigenous languages. You can, you can work on oral narrative and performances. You can do a uh, collection of literary based uh, work. And you can even do image database of medieval and renaissance manuscripts in Africa. You can do online archive of, for African poems. You can do public, public humanities and data, you know, social data. You know, we have quite, quite a lot. It is just endless. The possibilities are endless in DH. And therefore, I challenge you, uh, my dear colleagues, get involved, do something, and I'm sure we'll move ahead. Thank you very much for your attention.